there's been so much soccer slash football that we haven't been focusing on relationships or not relationships. <laughs> I'm not People. Right. No. Well, we did Tobin and Kristen a few, two videos ago because they had their trip to the UK and they're, uh, you know. That seems like ages ago now. I know, but... I know, right? Considering everything that happened yesterday in our video because we are recording yeah. this about an hour after we just released our last video. But I saw this and I was like, I want to do a fun, playful video because when I saw this... My heart kind of fluttered a little bit. <laughs> As we know, the UEFA's Nations League has been going on. And obviously, we have been pretty much focused on Group A, I believe it's called. Group A, who's going to qualify to play at the Olympics next summer. We've been kind of focusing on that. But, you know, there's a lot of UEFA teams. All the I believe all the UEFA teams are playing. I'm actually not quite sure. That's one thing we're going to talk about in a second. But one of the teams that obviously we follow is the Irish team. You know, we're talking about the Republic of Ireland because they just played Northern Ireland. Oof, the rivalry. Yeah, the you know, and somebody left. Right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> someone left a good comment. We're actually going to talk about Rusha and Katie in a second. So timestamps down below. But I will, I, we will start with this. I wasn't planning on that. But someone left a good comment. They said, Hey, Sarah, did you see the articles and videos about the Irish National Anthem? I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. Yeah, Sorry. we're not actually quite sure. <laughs> For the very first time, men or women in Windsor Park, the home of the Northern Ireland football, do you think that the Irish team will continue to make history and break historical walls down? And possibly now that the Great Britain won't be in the Olympics, we could see the first England versus Ireland women's game in February for the first time in 10 years. Yeah, so there's a lot in that comment. But the first thing it said was that they played the Irish national anthem for the first time at Windsor Park in Belfast. And I don't know if it had been played at other events in Northern Ireland or if it's just specifically Windsor Park, but either which way, it's very, very, very significant. It's very, very significant. You know, okay. Sarah and I, we're kind of dumb <laughs> because Sarah and I don't exactly, we don't want to speak on anything we don't, but there is um, historical context of how Ireland and Northern Ireland broke apart and there was a war and it was very serious. We don't really know the history of that, but we do know that they're two separate countries. They don't teach us a lot of world history in America. I mean, they teach you American history. and Not as much as the they should, things. yes. I'm sure they do now, maybe. Right. I don't know. But yeah, when someone commented this, I hadn't even seen this, but they played the Republic of Ireland's national anthem at Windsor Park in Northern Ireland for the first time. So I'm gonna have Sarah read part of this article and then we're gonna talk about it. Northern Ireland vs. Republic of Ireland, Republic's national anthem played at Windsor Park for the first time. The Republic of Ireland's national anthem has been played at Belfast's Windsor Park for the first time. The Republic's national anthem was played at Northern Ireland's national stadium ahead of their Nations League derby against the Republic on Tuesday night. It was played before God Save the King as the teams lined up. God Save the King was played at the Aviva Stadium in Dublin before the Republic's win over Northern Ireland in September. The national anthem was not played when the Republic of Ireland senior men's team visited Windsor Park for a Euro 1996 qualifier in November 1994. The anthem was not played a year before that either, in, 19, in November 1993, when the Republic secured a place at the 1994 World Cup Finals with a 1-1 draw against Northern Ireland at the same stadium. So yeah, so there had been a few uh, men's matches, and they had never played the Republic of Ireland's national anthem until the women played the other night on the 5th. So I think that's pretty cool. Historic. Women women bringing things together. Come on now. That's what, that's what we do. <laughs> so I thought that was very cool that it was the women's game that they said, you know, we are not going to, you know, the historical significance of it. Um, that, But to go on to that, what else that comment said, I, I wish I knew more about maybe like the historical part of it, because it says also that do you think that the Irish team will continue to make history and break historical walls down? And possibly now that Great Britain won't be in the Olympics, we could see the first England versus Republic of Ireland's women game in February for the first time in 10 years. Um, I hope so. I mean, I don't know if they're not playing each other because of political um, a situation or if it just hasn't worked out. But I hope they play each other. Also because Ireland's been killing it recently in the last couple years, this year in particular. Uh, so they deserve to play the top tier teams because they are one of them now. But I don't know if it's like a political thing, but I hope so, because the Republic of Ireland is killing it. They are on a winning streak. They have like a six match win a streak um, from September 23rd up until yesterday. They've won 
all six of their matches. They actually, and this is another thing we don't know about, part of the UEFA's Nations League, they have League A, League B, League C, and they the top tier teams go to A, the bottom teams go to C. Now, they have a thing called relegation, which means you go down a level. I don't even know that if they have it in American soccer. I don't know if that's just a European thing. We're not actually quite sure. But the thing I do know is that Ireland was in the B League, but they, because of their performance over the last six games, they have actually been promoted to the A League. Whoa, a promotion. Yes. So they have been they have been doing really well. Ireland Women Secure Nations League A birth after beating Albania on damp pitch. So I guess it was maybe that win that pushed them over to get the uh, League A promotion. Nice. Maybe that's one of the reasons why they kept playing it in that <laughs> those conditions. Right. Ireland, we can't stop. We can't stop. Um, so they're killing it. And, you know, as we see, like, even like, I believe Scotland got regulated to the League B. Um, so, but Ireland's on the way up. So... The chemistry they have on that team, I think, is one of the reasons why they're doing so well. Two of those people on the team, as we know, um, Katie McCabe and Rusha Littlejohn, they, you know, they have been subject to our videos. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, everyone knows the storyline. They went to the World Cup for the very first time over the summer. Um, and everyone knows what happened, obviously. And then after the World Cup happened... Rusha had not been called into, now had a call up because she had been injured. So the first two legs of the Nations League, Rusha was not part of it because she was injured. So coming into the matches, these two matches that are just recently played, Rusha was called into camp. She's back, played great. Her and, her and Katie have chemistry on the pitch. So since their relationship kind of yeah, fell apart, they broke up, they are still... They are so great on the pitch together. Everyone loves watching them. It's great that Rusha was back out there. They were together for a very long time. They are no longer together. And this was like kind of the first time we had seen them play together since everything had kind of happened. As we remember, Rusha had the, the podcast with Lucy Quinn and, you know, Katie was brought up and it was it was not awkward. You know, she was just saying congrats to her for being nominated on the Ballon d'Or. Congrats. It was all good. So that was a couple weeks ago. I will say I, I wasn't going to make this video, but I, I got a few TikToks. They popped up on my FYP and they were super cute because I don't know, memories. Of, they, they influenced you heavily. They did. They, so I saw these TikToks and they just kind of I don't know. They spark something in you. They just make your heart ache a little bit, you know? From the last couple matches, or at least, I guess this is maybe for the most recent one because I, these were what the TikTok was about. There was some cute Rusha and Katie moments. And one of the first things was, is Katie got an award for player of the year, for the Irish player of the year. I believe that's what the award was. And you could see when she came to give it, um, Denise O'Sullivan kind of presented her with the reward. Mm -hmm. And you could see Rusha in the background standing right next to Katie. Not close, but close enough. And you could see Rusha kind of, you know, acknowledging it. And, you know, you kind of saw her and them being, you know. Normal? <laughs> yeah, you know, as someone put, as teammates. teammates yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then we saw it. Then um, they played the game against Northern Ireland uh, on the 5th. And... They both started and, you know, they had the pre-match huddle, you know, they always have the huddle and you saw Rusha and Katie came a little bit after everyone was in the huddle and then Katie went right next to Rusha and they were right next to each other in the huddle and I think that's significant, you know. I'm sure they're not really thinking much of it because, you know, a huddle's a huddle wherever you land and end up. That's true. You never know who you're going to land next to. <laughs> it's like to. musical chairs. Yeah, that's true. But I think it was significant. Then there was a kind of, this was actually the, the, this was the TikTok that really kind of pushed me over the top to making this video. There was a super cute moment where Katie kind of looked at Rusha and you could kind of just see her look at her and then you kind of remind you of the old times. <laughs> and it was very sweet. Sarah, you thought it was sweet. You were very stone cold. It was, but you, it was a cute moment. Yeah. And she kind of looked over at her and kind of looked up and down. Like it's just a cute, and the, 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 mu the music with the edit was really cute the music is what gets you i know then in the post interview um so katie scored an amazing goal and they you know they interviewed her apparently she hit it with her right foot and she normally doesn't um and katie name drops rusha she, she also name dropped another player too oh that's true that's true <laughs> but yeah she she did she didn't have to name drop rusha but she did and 
But it's just very sweet to see. It like reminds you of the old times, you know? I feel like if they were acting any other way, meaning like if they disrupted the flow of the team based on, you know, whatever happened. Right. Um, the coaches wouldn't have that and the team wouldn't be having that. So right. That's a good point. They're trying to let other. bygones be bygones. Exactly. Yeah. And but I think they're good and I think <gasps> Yeah. They could joke about it. I think that's the moral of the story. They seem like they're on friendly terms again. Like, maybe not best friends, maybe not, but they're cool. Coworkers, teammates, colleagues. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then even someone here said, I did not see this, but someone said in the RTE post-match interview, Katie said that she could hear Rusha shout, shoot, before, before her goal. So she apparently name dropped her again. Twice. Say something scandalous did happen with Katie and Caitlin. Just say. Then for Rusha to come back and say, hey, even if something not great happened to me, I'm just going to be the best footballer I can be and win and be cool with Katie. And that means a lot. That's a very mature thing. You no, know, It just helps Rusha if something bad did happen to her that she can just say, you know, I'm going to move on and be as cool as possible. And then, it just, you know, it makes her, makes her look good, you know. Well, she has a great personality and she's a catch. She's single, ladies. That's what I keep reading in the comments. People are like, who's the lucky lady? You know, to snatch that up. Yes. And who, like, it just makes people kind of in Rusha's corner a lot. A lot of people are in her corner, you know. And they're really rooting for her. I mean, in those videos, let's just say those green shorts look great on her. (laughs) (laughs) She wears them so nice and she kind of like yanks them up too. Yes, and she's got that soccer booty. Yeah. (laughs) Sorry. I can appreciate a... Body. <laughs> she does have great legs and um and they're actually like model legs yeah there's actually a moment um i don't know if i showed you this tiktok sarah where rusha was taking a free kick and katie and rusha set it up and they were kind of giving each other not the eyes or anything but they were just kind of like you know and people on tiktok were like yeah like their teammates kind of thing but it's something more sarah i'm telling you not more romantically but more like you're cool i'm cool we're cool together like I mean, yeah. they were soulmates once mm-hmm. upon a time, so it's in a- another life, in another yeah. lifetime, in another timeline. I know. Parallel universe. Maybe they were. I know. But who knows? It's almost like if you have a boy, if you have an ex-partner, but it's almost like you have a best friend. Like, have you ever grown up with a best friend? You spent every waking hour with them or so much. Then they moved on. And then you're just kind of like those times. You're not that. that- was Lily for me. Exactly. Then you go and you're like, you're not the same, but you have all those memories together as just best friends. Even take aside the partner situation. Well, I- but it's like you have those memories or you have those times. And then you, it's like the person you once knew isn't even the person person that you knew you know what i mean by that it's like almost you become strangers again but you know they seem good on good terms they your republic of ireland is killing it a lot of great things are happening um so many people are in rush's corner i don't know katie has one of those magnetic you know magnetic personalities too you of just course. yeah so, they both do yeah they both do uh <laughs> both great catches yeah i know <laughs> i know and so it's kind of like you know they're out there living their best lives obviously their main focus is just playing well and you know seeing where that goes but i did see those really cute moments on tiktok and they seem cool they seem cool with each other i hope one day they can maybe get to the good friends back to good friends because that happens a lot especially with lesbians even lesbians who've been cheated on like down the road and that's just like a person that you'll always be close to even if you're not even if you were done wrong i you know that happens a lot what did everyone think um and if i put any of the tiktoks they, they got me sarah they got me um and i just love them and also what if if the women's soccer team is bringing the relations between republic of ireland and northern ireland together i mean win-win right (laughs) questions comments down below what did everyone think sir but at this at this speed i don't know if we're ever gonna get to the u.s women's national team matches but we're gonna get there we've been cut for time yeah matt david (laughs) questions comments down below we'll talk to everyone later have a great night bye